Hey everyone, uh, Matt McMahon here, H2O Plasma Plug. Um, so, an update on the uh, Revolution bike um, the, with the SSG circuit. Um, there's been uh, several uh, brainstorming ideas that uh, I've come up with and while discussing with, uh, with some of my friends, um, we've come up with some uh, more ideas uh, for this and uh, it's, it's sounding very promising, even if we weren't you know, even if the Bedini motor wasn't able to create free energy on its own, it still does create thrust. And um, I've actually finally got it to work. Uh, I actually tried to get uh, put this together, uh, I'd say it was last summer. So uh, we're coming up to uh, spring. The date is uh, April 14th, um, my sister's birthday actually. Uh, happy birthday, April. Um, so I, uh, I went and bought some magnet wire and I made a bunch of coils. One of my friends, um, owns a, uh, rewiring shop where they rewire motors and that's where I've learned a lot about motors. Um, thanks Conrad. Um, so, um, here are some of the coils. Yeah, and I guess a little bit of Tim Horton's advertisement to go with that. Alright. So, you can... Over there is the uh, the 750 turns. One of them's for my buddy Matt in Trinidad. Um, so I've got two of each. Um, I've got uh, the 850 on it right now on the Bedini motor. And uh, I need to get a new... Um, a new bike rim. I'm actually going to go and buy a cheap second-hand bike with aluminum rim. So um, this is one that uh, I'm actually looking very forward to testing. It's not like the conventional uh, motor where it's all sloppy. Sorry about the focusing problem there. Hopefully that'll fix. Okay, so you can see there that it, uh, it is very neatly wrapped. So what I did with it is I uh, wrapped my first layer, then I put um, a sheet of insulation, and I'll show you the picture of that right now. And uh, so I just kept doing that, and I kept wrapping and wrapping. So I do one layer, one layer, one layer, and uh, I've come up to 850 turns. Um, it's very symmetrical. So how that's laid out is there's one um, 26 gauge, one 23 gauge, 126 gauge, 123 gauge, all the way up. It was real. It was really hard to actually wind that coil, but uh, I wanted to do something really nice and see uh, see how if it reacted differently. Um, sort of like a, a multi-layer Tesla coil, uh, bifiller wrapped. So um, this was a real pain in the butt to get working, but I finally did, and I'm trying to actually charge up my my drill batteries and they're not charging they won't take the charge it only shows actively 30 uh, 0.36 volts um, going in but it, it doesn't hold a charge at all so uh, I'm assuming that there's some sort of circuitry inside here that's preventing that and I would really not like to have to to smash this thing open to make it so it works um, these batteries are really expensive and it would be a really good business for anybody to get into that if they can figure out how to bypass that. Um, there's a lot of people that are under the impression that if you just keep flicking it on and off, on and off, on and off, it'll work. Well, not if you drain it dead. It won't work like that. At least not with these um, uh, Milwaukee uh, batteries. And uh, I don't know how to replace them. So, um, But when I put it on uh, this battery, it worked awesome it started charging up fast so I'm going to show you the difference between when it isn't charging where the load is just being drawn in and wasted and um, when it actually is being used so that's the negative one it goes over here and I uh, accidentally touched some wires together last night Let's see if you can focus in on that and uh, I try to pull it off the battery and uh, burnt it, the, the wire turned red hot and uh, made a nice resistor and it burnt my hand really well. But uh, I guess it's all uh, par for the course. So, 
Um, I'm actually going to leave one off just so we can get it started and have the RPM go up on it. Yeah, that's the remnants of the one from last night. Alright. Now it is a really loud um, wheel. Um, the bearings aren't the greatest in it, um, so I can't wait to actually get a nice, nice rim. And if, one thing I've noticed, if it's charging nicely, sorry, I thought I, oh, it does create a reaction. If you, if you put your hands on the uh, magnet wire, uh, it goes off more often, but if you have it, leave it on, it stays on. So we'll actually uh, bring this in a little closer rather than uh, using the zooming features. So yeah, look at this. It actually stays on more. So I must be absorbing some of the electromagnetic frequencies, whatever you want to call it. So anyways, here's what happens when it is on an absolute, this is like a dead short I'm assuming. Slows right down, the little battery barely stays on. I left this thing run for 15-20 minutes and it never held a charge. And um, I can bring that over without shorting anything out again. Alright, so Forty, thirty-six, but it just keeps working its way down if I leave it on there for too long. So I'm not going to sit there and bore you with that. But uh, let's get over to this. And shortly after this, I will be going over drawings and a few new concepts. So you can hear a big difference in speed. It's, it's uh, moving a lot better. A lot less resistance. And normally before this light was lighting up, but it's not right now. And um, no, I guess I should have uh, should see before I do that. So one thing I did notice that I would like to share. I wonder if that number is backwards on there. It sort of looks backwards. It's 132. Um, so when I started with this battery, it was absolutely dead. It had no juice at all in it. And I've got a few more um, up here. A few more up here. So we'll, uh, maybe we can try that in, in a few seconds. Um, so one thing that happens, as soon as you put it on, it really starts climbing. like. Um, but it doesn't hold it doesn't actually hold the charge, so um, I think I now understand what John was saying about, um, John Padini was saying about that this isn't uh, meant for charging, it's sort of meant to fix batteries, but um, it's still a very efficient motor. Like, look how high up that went right away. 6 3.7, 4, 6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.6, 3.5, 6, 8, So, yeah, I could leave that on for a while. I'll just see, now the bearing is done on this, and now it's slowing down. So I actually have to spin it in the opposite direction now. Now, the reason for doing these batteries is because... Um, the, the UPS, or the UPC, I forget what they're called, um, maybe it's written on here, APC. Um, the batteries always go on them, and then they're done. So um, these are supposed to be, um, this motor is supposed to rejuvenate batteries, so um, that will be a great thing to find out in the future. Alright, well that one's already at 6 volts. Volts. All right, 
so that one's at a nice low amount. What was it? 67.64 volts. Check the other one before we go off of it. Should probably be up to 7 volts or near it. Yep, above 7 volts. So it shows that it does bring it back up. Um, one thing I've noticed is that resistor really stinks. Um, the resistor on the uh, on the circuit gets really hot. Uh, enough to actually burn you. Right there. This one right here. You can actually feel from there the heat coming off of it. So, uh, hopefully that's okay. I'm sure that's just how it works. Alright. So, just double check again. Alright, so we're at 64 volts. I mean, 0.64 volts. Usually when you take the load off, the motor speeds up a little bit. Look at that, right up to five or six, you know. You're not going to see that on a conventional charger, so one thing I do want to see is how much is actually coming out of it. It might be too uh, flip floppity to, to measure it properly, but maybe we'll get it. So it'll say uh, three. 310 average, maybe th between 305 and 310 uh, volts. So I'm gonna actually leave this back on. And that neon light over here is a really unusual thing here. The one right here, it sometimes lights up, sometimes doesn't light up. It seems like the dead or something is that lights up more. It's really unusual. Um, if someone wants to explain that, that would be awesome. And uh, here's my adjuster. if it'll keep going if it's at a low RPM. So yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't adjust that way. So looks like when this is on the bike, it's gonna have to be preset to the uh, the speed that it goes. And uh, I'm assuming by the more uh, more coils that you put on it to get it going, uh, the faster it'll allow it to spin because there'll be less resistance. 